Next up, we have Gloria Galvez. Gloria met Critical Resistance Los Angeles through her organizing with the Youth Justice Coalition. As a CR member, Gloria helped plan mobilizations and campaign strategy in the campaign to stop women's jail construction in Los Angeles, which many years after Gloria's involvement in the chapter achieved full victory defeating women's jail construction in LA. Gloria has also helped plan political events um, education events such as an International Women's Day event and Asada Shakur teach-in at Chuko's Justice Center. Um, she has also invited us to co-curate an installation and series of events in 2019 at the Women's Center for Creative Work in LA and that show was the seed of a new CR archival show which will be opening at UC Santa Cruz online this fall adjacent to the Barring Freedom exhibition. Gloria, we pass it to Thank you. Um, I'm going to just share my screen with you guys. What, what's in this image is a community action in support of Alex Sanchez. And this was a community action in 2009. And Alex Sanchez, who is a community peacekeeper and co-founder of Homies Unidos, at the time Alex was uh, incarcerated and he was facing some charges that the community saw false charges. And so in response to defend him and to activate and tell his real story, uh, folks got together and organized a series of actions. And at the time I was a youth organizer with the Youth Justice Coalition, which is an org that works to challenge the, the treatment of young people within the prison industrial complex and to transform that treatment and abolish the entities that are dehumanizing them and making them disposable. And so as an organizer for the YJC, I was like given the opportunity to like participate in building this like bear that we used for the action. And this bear was like a bear that we like all, all of the youth organizers and some of the high school students like together built out this bear and we paper mache it and we built some of the images that uh, some of the poster boards that were used along with the bear, which is like you can see like a little zoom in of it, which is this like we can't bear this anymore type of bear. And for me, this experience was the first time that I had ever seen like art used as a political tool and I was really like touched and changed by the whole experience and also really also touched and changed by the experience of art being used as a political tool, but of people getting together and organizing and like defending each other and taking care of each other and telling our stories that the system often tries to like obscure or distort. So 11 years after that action, um, here I want to share this image of a screening that I had at a uh, mutual aid action Los Angeles who is also known through the name of their sister org revolutionary autonomous communities uh, they are collectives that are working for food justice and making food accessible to folks who don't have access to food healthy foods and just like food on a daily basis um, so this here specifically uh, I did a screening of a film that I a cartoon film that I worked on titled life in an open air prison and in the cartoon what the cartoon does it's it connects uh it makes a connection between social political racial and economic structures of the status quo between these structures and and specifically the, these structures within the banana market and it makes a connection to the idea of a carceral society and and so we i I have some images of the cartoon that I'll show you in a second, but what this cartoon, we, we had a screening and we had banana, banana themed foods and we watched the film and we talked about the film and we talked about how the film connected to our own lives, whether it was through having access to healthy foods or the types of foods we had access to or what we didn't have access to. And these are some of the film stills from the film. And so one thing that I like 
one ending note on the film is that I saw this film as like a political education project. I had some experiences where I was talking to young people about the Banana Republic and they were like, you mean the store, the clothing store? And I was like, no, like Banana Republic as in the historical like thing that happened in Latin America of American companies going into Latin America and creating chaos and exploitation and so on and the resistance that happened in response to that too and so that's where this film was born out of out of like building an educational project that gave us the time and the space to like talk about this history and also process it and connect it to our day-to-day -day experiences and I also organized things that were not centering my work I organized things that centered other people's work which I saw as like transformative I that, that I saw contain transformative ideas or just transformative uh, images that could inspire people. And so here is a flyer to a show that I organized for Mala, which was installed within their community center, which is like a food store slash food pantry slash thrift store slash hangout space for community folks. Um, and we just like, in, like, installed the TVs like within the thrift store and like made it a part of the layout of the thrift store. And so the theme of this show was specific to imagining a life outside of capitalism. So all the works that were presented within the show touched upon that idea. Um, so right now what I'm doing with Mala and Rack is I'm fundraising for them. I created, uh, I'm using a print that I created for an artist lecture and I'm now turning that print into a print that they, that we are selling and we're selling it to raise funds to create a first aid resource rack and just resource team for folks who are houseless. In addition to making things, I also collaborate with people and like make my skills or my economic resources or any sort of resources I have, I make them available to them. And sometimes these collaborations are like, uh, are based on just like ideas that they want to see happening in the world and I center their ideas or sometimes I approach folks with an idea and I'm like hey like I'm interested in doing this are you interested um here in this in this image we have two images in this slide we have two images the the top image is this like wooden dandelion that I created when I was working for Freedom Harvest which was a project by Dignity and Power where they took space outside of the Twin Tower jails in LA and they created like a zone of art and healing for people who were visiting their loved ones and together we made this dandelion um like we talked about the vision and everything and I worked with a fabricator and and we made this dandelion and the dandelion basically people would come up to it and tie their wishes for their loved ones their wishes for the world their wishes their abolitionist wishes um so yeah they were like making wishes before they entered to visit their loved ones. Another aspect to my practice is that I organize events. Uh, these are two events that I have organized. The first one, Practicing Abolition, which was actually done in collaboration with Ashley Hunt. Uh, for this event, I did facilitate a conversation with artists where folks took, took time to reflect on how the prison industrial complex was present within the art world. For the second event, the Zapatista art show that I did, uh, I invited these like artists, no, sorry, these like tech activists who work um, with tech and social justice spaces to like facilitate a workshop where people were learning tech skills that they can apply to their movements. Mm -hmm.